Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. How are you all doing out there? Here in the UK, I've got to admit, it's been cold, wet and rainy for the last few days and weeks. Feels like months too, but I guess that is good podcast recording weather. Even though I am craving some good old-fashioned vitamin D, sitting in the sun with a cold beer, hopefully that will materialise in the next few weeks. But enough of me being a typical Brit talking about the weather. In today's episode, Dominic Profico from Mobiquity is joining me on the podcast. And Dominic is going to talk about how technology adoption and the need for contactless tools has led companies to bring their digital offerings to the forefront. And he's also going to talk about why advertising is necessary to see a positive ROI on those digital transformation projects and how that tactic can keep brands on the cutting edge of innovation, especially if they're serious about continuing to move forward. Because let's face it, digital transformation is a journey, not a destination. But enough from me. Buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Philadelphia where Dominic is waiting to speak with us about all this and much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure, absolutely. So um, my name is Dominic Profico. My my official title uh, is Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at Mobiquity. And, you know, in all practical terms, this means that uh, I am accountable to my team and our customers for all the engineering and technology that goes on in the company. Being in this business and technology for the last uh, 20 plus years at this point, uh, spending my formative years working for uh, a little company called Lockheed Martin, uh, the largest defense contractor in the world. Uh, I did a lot of uh, research and development for them in in and around different companies. technologies and areas for, for various government uh, groups and agencies, but a lot of data integration kind of work. So now, you know, in my role at Mobiquity, I, I actually support our customers more broadly in, in their digital initiatives um, from the, the simplest of kind of mobile applications to enterprise scale, cloud migration, and, and the realization of their, their digital product creation dreams. And the first thing I've got to say is Mobiquity is an incredibly cool name. I've got to ask, is, is there a story behind that name? And, and you could also tell the listeners a little bit more about the, the kind of problems that you set out to solve them. Sure, absolutely. So so the, the establishment of Mobiquity and the name came before my time here. Yeah. Uh, but the mythology around it is, um, you know, that, that our founders were sitting in a pool house, um, you know, in the backyard of one of the founders homes. Um, and, and you know, when the company was created, it was created with a conviction um, right around 2010. It was created with conviction that mobile devices, mobile applications, um, kind of that, that operating on the run type of mentality was really just going to continue to grow. Um, and that was really going to become a part of um, everybody's life every day in their life and in everything they do. And so whether you're a company big or small, you know, the, the belief was you would have to have um, a spot in this mobile world. You'd have to have your own unique mobile destination for people to go to. And so um, what they envisioned as a kind of uh, ubiquitous mobility um, ultimately became mobility. Love that. And for a long time, I think, tech simply existed in the background, but now customers want to do business with want to do business with innovative companies, making marketing new cutting edge technology, whether it be for mobile orders, contactless payments, or online banking, more than ever before, especially in order to deepen things like customer loyalty and get continued buy-in from their customers. But I'm curious, as someone right in the heart of this space, what kind of changes have you seen in the last 12 months, especially as customers' needs have seemed to have dramatically changed right across the board. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, the last 12 months obviously have been um, crazy, you know, worldwide. Yeah. Um, and, and I think there's there's a couple of different interesting areas um, where, where I've kind of seen some some shifting and changing. One I've kind of referred to as almost an awakening. Um, when, when you look at some of the big companies and some of our customers uh, and their need to pivot so quickly. Um, when when the pandemic hit and that need to be able to take people and have them work from home and really uh, put in place 
in a lot of cases, uh, a remote working culture and technology at record speeds. I, I think what it showed a lot of um, CTOs and CIOs and, and, and COOs even was that when you actually focus and you have a need and, and as a business, you kind of rally behind that need, um, you're able to get some amazing things done, right? And so, so we're traditionally IT groups might talk about things that are going to take six months, a year, two years, five years, you know, that, that kind of a thing was accomplished in 30 days, um, at least as an initial MVP, if you will, um, in order to, to combat the, the challenges of the pandemic. And so um, from an awakening perspective, I, I think there is some opportunity there that the companies have seen when, when they really want to accomplish something, they, they truly can if they get behind it. Uh, I think the other area, you know, is, is really an adoption. Over the recent, you know, it's called the last 10 years or so, uh, you've seen a lot more technology in a lot more people's hands. You have a whole generation of, of people who have grown up with technology in your hands. And so they have this expectation of technology. But over the last 12 months, I think you've seen that that adoption of technology really expand to people who traditionally um, maybe were a little bit more resistant to, to picking up their phone and doing banking or to do their food shopping. And, and I don't know that two years ago, you could have actually predicted this expanded user base and, and that kind of adoption from maybe folks who traditionally shunned the technology a little bit more. Yeah, and there's been so many changes right across the board. I, even if you if you go out of your home and go to a fast food, uh, restaurant the touch screen is no longer appealing because you don't know how many people have touched it before you from the atm buttons and chip and pin machines so i'm curious how do you think technology adoption and the need for contactless tools has led companies to bring their digital offerings to the forefront now so i think if you, you kind of flash back to the beginning of of the pandemic um yeah. and and how little we knew right about what, how it was passed and everything um, you had people, you know, out, out standing on their out their front doorstep, sanitizing packages from Amazon and spraying sanitizer all over them. And um, I, you know, you had kind of this this knowledge vacuum, and and in a lot of places, you had kind of a historic challenge of trust with media and governments. And and I think the only way to overcome that is transparency. And so, what you started to see a lot of businesses do, um, and it became critical for them to do, is to show their customers what they were doing to really provide that protection. So whether it was contactless um, in order to make sure that you could interact with their, their representatives in store or remotely, or it was curbside so that, you know, you could literally not get out of your car and just have somebody um, like the Domino's pizza here in the U S showed in their commercial, you, you could just have somebody put a pizza right in the trunk of your car um, or pure e-commerce, traditional e-commerce. These are no longer, you know, tools of convenience um, during this kind of event they've become critical. Um, they've become necessary uh, in order for people to live their lives. So, so you have almost a life critical services that they're starting to provide. And so businesses needed to bring attention to that in order to, I think, overcome a lot of that fear um, and, and to really help bring to bear and show to their customers that there are differentiators um, around this contactless and, and curbside space that allows them to, to be... Um, you know, more compassionate about the variety of, of users who may need to interact with their services. Yeah, I completely agree. And b before you came on the podcast today, I always do a little bit of research on the guests and the company. And, and one of the things that I learned about you was your belief that advertising is necessary to see a positive ROI on those digital transformational projects that so many businesses are on right now. But for anyone that's not seen that article, can you expand on that and how this tactic can actually help brands on the cutting edge of innovation continue to move forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, it depends on the digital transformation in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I think your traditional cloud migration kind of thing, you can obviously realize significant ROI just by performing the migration itself um, and reducing costs and those kinds of things. But, you know, I, I think when it comes to the digital transformation related to the scope of how you're interacting with your customer, I, I think that marketing is, is absolutely critical. Similar to that idea of showing your users and your customers um, what you're doing to kind of protect them, um, showing them what their options are, different ways of working with your, your business are critical, right? People, um, people are inherently, and I'm going to say it this way, but apparently more selfish about how they interact with businesses. Um, they, they, they don't really want to interact with you the way you want them to. They want to interact with you the way they want to. The idea of self-service exists in nearly all aspects of our lives. 
Um, and so leaving the success of your digital transformation project to the chance that your customers may or may not see your app in the app store or um, you know, your, your um, curbside services that are provided via your web platform, we're leaving it to that chance, that's not a safe bet in my mind. And remember, for the target audiences for a lot of brands, again, it's the generation of people who grew up with technology, they have an expectation that this technology is out there and, and they're going to gravitate towards businesses that, that utilize it. I mean, just look at who, who pays attention to events like Google I.O. or, or Apple's WWDC. Um, these are not just, you know, techies and, and, and you know, geeks like me. Um, these are everyday people who just want to see what the next you know, whiz bang special thing coming from Apple is. And, and so they want to know that they're identifying with brands that are in that space. And so as you go through the digital transformation and, and really change how you interact with your customers, you need to show them that you are forward thinking um, and that you are interested in providing for them, um, you know, maybe if it's a convenience store, faster access to a sandwich um, or as, as things kind of grow from here, maybe it's that ability to, for your phone to let you know that your car is low on fuel and you have a gas station that's two miles away, you know, different, just different ways to show that um, you are interested in making their lives better through technology. And for anyone listening and hearing about Mobiquity for the very first time, you do help the world's leading brands understand, apply, and engage with technology, but in meaningful ways. And that feels quite unique at the moment. But do you have any client stories or use cases that you could share that would just bring that to life for people that are hearing about you for the first time? Sure. And I think, you know, one in particular that I'm pretty proud of, um, you know, we work closely with, and I've worked for a number of years closely with a Latin American telecommunications provider. Um, we do a whole bunch of work for them, several different domains. But one area where we worked with them early on in our, our relationship was with consolidation and aggregation of payment systems um, that they they utilized across multiple Latin American countries. They exist in eight or nine different countries, and, and everything was very kind of um, dispersed. And so we helped to kind of centralize a lot of that that functioning, and really helped them to streamline how their customers were able to to purchase things like you know, mobile minutes for their phones or, or uh, text messaging plans if they were going to a different region, things like that. Well, during the peak of the pandemic, this provider was unfortunately forced to close a lot, if not, you know, close to all of their brick and mortar locations. And these are locations where a lot of their customers were very used to coming in, speaking with the representative, topping off their mobile minutes, uh, paying for additional services, those kinds of things. So this completely changed how they would interact with their customers. And, and what, what I'm proud of in this, this space is that when they migrated these customers to having to use their online platform, having to use their digital payment processing system, um, the scale on that system went up three, four, five X almost overnight. And the system stood up to it, you know, barely a blip uh, payments were received. People received the services that they were purchasing. Um, and I think this really allowed uh, this company to, to continue doing well, to continue providing the services to their customers. And, and these are critical services, particularly during something like a global emergency where they're, they're communication services. Um, you know, one of the individuals that we work with closely at that company described it as, um, you know, that, that the fact that the system stood up to that and was able to so quickly respond to their needs played a significant role in really saving their entire business. Um, and I think that's something that you know, during the craziness of the last 15 months, um, I'm pretty proud of. And for any business leaders or decision makers that are listening to our conversation today and wondering how this could work in their world, do you have any examples of how digital products can actually manifest into new streams of revenue, enhance business models and, and things like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think digital products, you, you see it, uh, you see them everywhere. You see them yeah. all around you. I mean, there's, um, you know, at least here in the US, I can say there's commercials every day for, um, you know, personal insurance companies, car insurance companies using different IoT technologies or even just the sensors on your phone to really look at how you drive, right? And that that system, that data is able to change how they rate you in terms of risk. Um, so whether it's your phone or it's plugged into the OBD2 port on your car, um, personalization at that level uh, is, is becoming more predominant in a lot of things that you do. And so that completely changes the business models for, for personal insurance companies um, everywhere. And, and so we are actually working very closely um, with a, a company right now that, that specializes in that technology. 
you know, with their goal being to help distribute the technology to uh, larger and, and um, existing insurance companies that want to change their business model, want to change how they interact with their customers and your users and personalize not just how they pay their bills or make claims online or those kinds of things, really personalize the service that they receive and make sure that they're getting the, the right amount of coverage, you know, as what is you know, ultimately the right price. And something I always try and do on this daily tech podcast, especially in an age where we're all bombarded with information and misinformation and myths and misconceptions, is, is maybe lay a few to rest that have been frustrating the hell out of you every time you <laughs> stroll down your smartphone. So are, are there any myths or misconceptions in your industry that you could lay to rest today? Well, actually, I'm going to start with our company itself. Um, so Mobiquity, I think one of the, the challenges we run into very often is our name you know, kind of by definition demonstrates a mobile focus. Um, and, and where I think there's uh, that the myth or the misconception is that we're mobile only. And while we are largely mobile first, um, and while we absolutely still believe that mobile ubiquity um, exists um, and, and is kind of the driving force, we've evolved so far beyond that, that original concept to, to true digital products. Um, we're, we're, you know, a digital product company with a mobile centric name. Um, we are customer driven, right? Our hours and our clients. And so, uh, where I may be responsible for engineering and technology, even I look at it through that lens first is, is what is it we're trying to accomplish? What is the business goals? Uh, what is, what is our client's strategy, um, for what it is they're trying to do or what are their clients really trying to do? What are their users trying to accomplish and how do we remove friction from that? And how do, do we enable that? And whether it's a mobile application or a, um, you know, accessibility compliant website that that scales to a mobile. Um, we always kind of start with with that view, and then we bring in the technology, um, and and that technology is not limited only to mobile. And so while while that our namesake suggests that, um, you know, we bring in the technology to fit the need all the way from where it's facing the customer, where their users are, customers, customers are using the, using the technology uh, back to their backend systems, whether it's an ERP or a CRM and, you know, kind of full scale enterprise integration. Um, so, you know, I think for me, the, the first thing I would look at from a myth is, is or a misconception, I'd say, is that Mobiquity is mobile only. If we look towards the future, if I ask you to gaze into your virtual crystal ball, is there anything in particular that excites you about where all this is heading and how you're going to continue to help brands leverage technology in the future too? Yeah. So, you know, as a, uh, my, my, my early days of my career in Lockheed Martin, I was a, a data integration guy, a middleware guy, if you will. And I was very focused on how do you, you integrate data. And I think you're starting to see more and more of that uh, come to fruition. So I'm pretty excited that, um, you know, that that's coming a little bit full circle. And it's not as much about, uh, creation of a new mobile app or just getting a mobile application out. But bringing um, to life a true digital product involves those integrations. It involves, you know, other data, other other technology. And so, um, you know, as, as like I said, as an old school middleware guy, there's so much value in that. And so, for example, injecting, you know, technologies like uh, AI-enabled computer vision and IoT into a convenience store uh, digital program model, it brings to bear uh, that in-store shopping to be more like on online shopping. Um, you're able to maybe more rapidly find products on shelves or um, get in and out in a shorter time frame, or even bringing technologies like augmented reality, reality to bear in that space um, helps to really enhance a user's experience um, and really customize it to what they're trying to do. So, so I think it's that perspective um, that Digital product creation is not just a matter of true creation of something new, uh, but the integration of a lot of existing capabilities and technologies um, to drive a level of personalization into experiences that effectively leads to a point where no two people will experience the same brand in the same way. Um, and that, that really excites me about the future. Well, you have had an incredibly cool career in tech, and I, I'm always curious about when speaking with my guests, is what was the soundtrack to that tech career? So if I was to ask you if there was a particular song or piece of music that inspired you throughout your career, or maybe just even helps you get your head in the zone before going into a meeting or delivering a big keynote speech, is, is there a particular song that springs to mind for you? 
It's a great question. It's really hard. Um, <laughs> I have a fairly eclectic taste in music. Um, I have children that are uh, musical. And so, you know, there's kind of a full gamut of music in my life. Um, so between, you know, classic rock and modern jazz, various genres and artists, um, you know, if, if I really, really had to boil it down, I've kind of got to go with a classic. Um, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. And that's one that I would go back to again and again. It's upbeat and really kind of uh, drives you forward into to doing whatever is next. What a fantastic choice. And hard not to get up and start dancing and singing. Just just mentioning the title there is enough yep. to get you going, isn't it? And for anyone listening that would like to find out more information about uh, everything we've talked about today and your work at Mobiquity, what's the best starting point of finding you online and contacting your team? Well, I mean, obviously our website, so mobiquity.com. Um, it is kind of a universal go-to. Uh, my email is, is dprofico at mobiquityinc.com. And uh, you know, I, I try to respond as much as possible to incoming requests. And I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well. And so if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, generally you, you will hear back from me. Well, I've loved chatting with you today, especially about how technology adoption and the need for contactless tools can lead to companies to bring their digital offerings to the forefront. That, combined with your rich story in, uh, especially in your tech career, incredibly cool and inspiring. But more than anything, just thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with me today. Well, thank you, Neil. I appreciate it. It has been my pleasure. For a long time, technology simply existed in the background. But now, customers want to do business with innovative companies, which makes marketing new cutting-edge technology, whether it's for mobile orders and contactless payment or online banking, it makes it more important than ever before, especially if companies are serious about deepening that customer loyalty and continue to get buy-in from their customers. So a big thank you to Dom for highlighting this and much more, and also providing a solution and a way forward for businesses. Because I think all too often we hear about what's wrong, but not how to get around those obstacles. So a huge thanks to Dom. And an even bigger thank you to each and every one of you for listening to the podcast today. And remember, if you want to share your thoughts and your insights, email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is techblogwriter.co.uk, where you'll also find 1,600 interviews of this uh, podcast and the podcast I host with Citrix and Netgear too. But that's it for today, I'm afraid. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.